Hey everyone, today we're going to look at the systems unique to Dragon Ball Fighters and try to understand how they fit within an overall game plan. And we're just going to go at these things one by one. So being a 3v3 fighter, your game plan should focus on utilizing your whole team and not just one character at a time. To that end, you have two buttons dedicated to calling in the other members of your team as an assist. Assist 1 will bring your second character in, and A2 will bring your third member in to do an attack. There is a long cooldown before you can call that character as an assist again, but your two assists do not share a cooldown. Next, and this is all going to kind of tie together eventually, when you get hit, a certain percentage of the damage that you take turns into blue health. Blue health can be recovered in two ways by tagging out or by activating Sparking Blast, which we'll talk about uh, last. While your damaged character is on the bench, they will slowly recover blue health. This is important to know because you're going to want to preserve as much of your character's life as possible and extend how long they get to fight. And that brings us to tagging. There are a bunch of different ways to get characters in and out. First, you can hold either of your two assist buttons down for a second or two, and that will bring that character in. Alternatively, you can tag instantly by hitting six and the assist at the same time. So that's, again, forward and assist. This is a hard tag, and it's generally not safe to do because the incoming character super dashes in, which can be punished, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But just for now, know that it's not necessarily safe to do. However, you can tag in the middle of a combo to make a hard tag safe and to continue that combo. And there are other ways to get characters swapped in as well. Again, at the end of a combo, if you super and then tap an assist button, that will bring your other character in to do their super. This will cost two bars, but it can be worth it to get another character in. You can get the same effect without the extra bar of meter by ending the combo not with a super from your point character, but by doing a half circle and then hitting the assist button. Doing a half circle forward will cause them to do a level one super when they come in and half circle backwards and assist will cause them to perform their level three super. And there's still one more way to get another character in and that's to do what is functionally an alpha counter. So while you're blocking, if you hit forward in the assist, that will use one bar to switch your characters out. This can be useful to disrupt pressure but it carries a similar risk to hard tagging, in that it can be baited and punished. And you can do more than just tag your own characters in and out. You can do the same to your opponent with a snapback. While in Dragon Rush, which is this game's take on the usual fighting game throw system, hold an assist button and it will send the opponent's characters out and bring in one of their other ones. It costs one bar to do, but there is value in snapbacks. For starters, any character brought in this way loses their recoverable blue health, so it acts as a form of damage in its own right. Second, Dragon Ball Fighters is sort of round based. Once a character dies, the game resets to the ground with both characters facing each other like you do at the start of a match. There are no incoming characters, so you don't get incoming mix ups like in Marvel. Snapbacks are the only way to get incoming mix ups going which once you up your game a little bit and you start working on your set play, this can be invaluable. Additionally, some characters like 18 can easily combo into a Dragon Rush, so it's easy for them to snap back whenever they want. The next mechanic that we're gonna talk about is Vanish. By pressing M and H together, you will instantly teleport behind your opponent and send them flying. This can be blocked and it's quite unsafe on block, so you don't wanna just do this raw all the time. And additionally, it isn't particularly damaging. So you want to be smart about where and how you use this, but there is a good way to use this. Uh, for starters, you can use Vanish to extend combos, or you can punish long range moves with it. Now, like I said, it doesn't do a whole lot by itself, but if you can combine it with a hit from say a Key Blast, you can get full screen punishes because your Vanish will now cause a wall bounce and lead into a combo to make it worth your meter. The next thing we're going to look at real briefly is called Key Charging. Uh, this mechanic is not particularly useful, but if you hit L and S together, you'll start powering up and your key meter will rapidly fill. You're almost never going to get a chance to safely do this. Uh, it might change as the game becomes optimized, but this isn't something that you should be doing right now as a beginner. 
Uh, next, we have Super Dashing, performed by hitting H and S together. And whether you're on pad or stick, there's usually going to be a macro button that's both of those bound to just one button. Super Dashing will cause you to home in on an opponent while ignoring small projectiles. And if you hit, you can do an air combo, and if it's blocked, you usually bounce far enough away that it's hard for most of the cast to effectively punish. So, that sounds like it's going to be pretty tempting to just spam, right? Wrong. 2H. 2H will blow that up. That is down and heavy. Do not get into a habit of spamming super dashes recklessly. And if you see other people doing the same, hit 2H on them. It has a time and a place, but doing it raw and non-stop will get you destroyed. 2H is every single character's universal launcher, which is invulnerable to aerial attacks, and it will lead to a full air combo. And it can be done on reaction. So cover your super dashes with assists, use it to get through key blast spam, do not just spam it raw. Then there are deflects, which is the only equivalent thing to a push block this game has, uh, and that's done by hitting 4S and that will cause you to swat incoming attacks away, which means key blasts, uh, super dashes, strikes, stuff like that. It can be good for getting out of pressure. And finally, we have Sparking Blast, which is Dragon Ball Fighter's take on the X-Factor comeback mechanic. Hitting all four buttons will activate Sparking Blast. It will give you more damage dramatically, increases the rate at which you gain meter, it regenerates your blue health rapidly, lets you combo off of universal overheads, it stops super dashes from bouncing back on block, and you can activate it mid-combo to extend said combo. My favorite interaction of all, though, is that it changes how Vanish works. By activating Sparking Blast and then holding down the buttons for Vanish instead of tapping them, you don't attack immediately and send the opponent flying when you teleport. Instead, you teleport behind them, but you do nothing if you hold the buttons down which greatly increases your options. In addition to that, Sparking Blast will last significantly longer the fewer characters you have left on your team, but it does not get stronger. So that's it for the mechanics breakdown. Next time, we're gonna look at some of the really helpful training mode options that DBFC has. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy, have a good one, y'all.